So you can probably tell by the little tiny items on the line that Brittany's baby has been born. He came five weeks early. Um, absolutely beautiful birth. Got to be there for the whole thing. Uh, my girl was such a trooper. So proud of her. Um, because he's been born early, he's still in the hospital needing a little bit of help just getting his lungs strengthened up and she got to come home last night and she's um, pumping and getting everything ready for him and I've been washing like a crazy person just washing like all the baby clothes and all the bedding and everything and because we weren't quite ready for him yet you know so um, but oh he's a little cutie and I'm so proud and yeah I'm just catching up with some washing gonna do some laundry while she's popped into hospital to have a little cuddle with a little man and the F-111s are up here. They've just been buzzing back and forth for the last sort of half an hour or so practicing. There's a really huge fireworks festival coming up and it's called River Fire and all the buildings in the city have fireworks coming off them and they have barges in the river doing um, fireworks because Brisbane River really runs really much straight through the city there and it's really spectacular, really, really beautiful to watch. We're not really sure if we'll catch it this year because um, it's different when you live in Kangaroo Point and it's like happening outside your window. We used to be right on the river opposite the city so we could see the full thing and when those F-111s did their afterburn they'd come right down low on the river and you could feel the heat from the afterburn. It was so incredible but yeah it's really exciting. If you haven't seen it and if I don't get to see it and show you check it out. I'm sure there's videos about it on YouTube. Back when we lived there we didn't have YouTube or anything so we have it only memories in our head of it but yeah no I'm feeling really good and I'm really enjoying being a grandmother um, I'm going to call myself abuela because I've been binging Spanish telenovelas this whole last couple of months while I've been crocheting um, Bubby's baby blanket and because I used to live in Spain I can actually speak Spanish so but it'd been a really long time since I'd been around Spanish speakers so watching these telenovelas it's um, been really good for me to sort of rekindle my love of, of the Spanish language and realize how much I actually could understand uh, which surprised me just it all coming back to me like kind of like riding a bike and of course grandmother in Spanish is abuela so I've decided I'll be abuela and um, yeah Pixie's getting spoken to in Spanish now because it's just it's just happening so um, yeah, life is great. I'm really, I'm just so happy. I'm so happy being here and I'm so glad that I get to be there to really support my girl doing this, you know, anything she wants and needs and just so that she can focus solely on her own recovery and her baby and healing and it was, yeah, it's, look, it's only been a few days but it's, it's beautiful and I'm just really really happy I just want to let you know that because I haven't been doing a lot of recording of anything because I really wanted to be here now in the moment and um, it's been really important for us to focus on this preparation time so yeah anyway that's up back from me Freddie and me walking down to the river to check out river bar after we just saw Leo open his eyes and look around and interact like a real baby. It was really cool. It was really, really cool. And the F-111s just flew overhead and I just, I've still got goosebumps all over my body. She's buzzing. I'm buzzing so bad. Oh, we didn't see them, but we saw a bit of one in the sky, but. So that's the hospital behind us. Where Bobby is. That's where baby is. That's where our little baby is. And he's doing really good. Videos. We're here with everybody else in Brisbane. Yeah, I've never done it this way. Nah. We're really lucky, I feel like. Yeah. We've had some amazing apartments with the views of it. Yeah. The way the regular I was going to say, this is the way the Polvos do it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is us now. Well, Which is us now. We, we are Polvos now, so we have to sit on the ground, ground like everybody else, and we don't get to look at it outside our window and from our back porch. So. <laughs> Let's light this river on fire!
super exciting day. I just got the call from Brittany that her and baby Leo are being sent home and they're on their way home. I'm so excited. I've just, yeah, I've been like doing grandma nesting all day, vacuuming and washing her bed and mopping the floors and cleaning everything up, cleaning the bath and just making it all really perfect for when he comes home. And I've had to put a little um, gate, the little gate that I use on my caravan fence across the back just so that Pixie can't come in for a little while just until we get her used to the idea. And um, yeah, so any minute now they're gonna be here. This is his beautiful room. Um, we've actually moved him now. He was originally in the little room at the back, but it doesn't have air conditionings and this, this was actually my room and it's got an air conditioning in it, uh, but I thought it'd be better. It's right next to Brittany's room and I'm not using it because I'm in the caravan, so. Hey, Yo, hey, little Leo, coming home. Okay. Yeah. Go. Good morning, beautiful people. It's been a very, very long time from updates from me and I know I've been meaning to do something, but then at the same time, I've been like just actually couldn't be bothered which sounds really bad but different priorities you know uh, there's been a lot there's been a lot going on but today uh, Pixie and I are off on an excursion we're actually catching up with uh, my friend Lisa from who I met at the Caloundra Vintage Caravan weekend um, she was camped like a few doors down from me and and, and her neighbor as well we're gonna have like a little vintage get-together and so Pixie and I have caught the bus here to South Bank and now I'm just waiting for a ferry to take me over to her place at U Farm and that'll be quite nice. We're going to be like retro ladies and sip martinis apparently but I probably won't sip martinis because I don't drink so well. I drink occasionally but even if I did drink I don't know. I actually don't know if I've ever had a martini. Maybe I might try one. So yeah I have been filming snippets of my existence over the last, I don't know, month or so since I last posted something and I will try and incorporate that into, I hope you can hear me okay, the sort of city sounds and birds and a sort of a river swimming pool thing behind me here so it might be a bit noisy. I'm struggling. I've been wearing my loops every time I come out into the city I, I wear my little loops sound reducing earphones but I had to take them out so I could talk to you but I noticed the difference as soon as I took them out I'm like whoa city is noisy and I do struggle with that I just struggle with that general hum of activity uh, yeah I've been struggling with city adjustment um, I've had a lot going on like as far as mentally physically not feeling the best um, yeah but I have been going rock climbing weather permitting it'll be on again tonight so if the weather's nice I've brought my rock climbing gear with me so I can get changed and go straight to rock climbing after our lunch um, retro lunch and I've joined the gym down the road so I've been trying to you know get fit and strong and build up my strength but there's been a few days of pain in my hands I've had pain in my tailbone coccyx kind of sacrum area little just niggly things you know and I don't know if part of that is because I'm just not used to all this stuff happening around me I'm, I do love the big wide open spaces and the peace and quiet that comes with not having an onslaught in my brain of things to process uh, there's been some emotional sort of turmoil stuff happening and I don't want to go into details about that but I, I, I'm I'm riding the uh, peaks and valleys, you know, and, and just I'm soldiering on. I'm going busking at least once a week and I'm enjoying that. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I had to quit the choir because choir and rock climbing were on the same night and I just, choir is a full on commitment. You really need to be there every time and also they have, you know, events happening, performances every weekend. Um, well, not every weekend, but a lot of the time. And I just found that it was a lot of commitment and because I don't want to be driving around here at all. Um, I've even contemplated, and this is a big one, I've actually been looking at selling the truck. And I know everyone will be going, no, not the truck. I can't drive it around here. I can't even get it in and out of the driveway without, you know, stressing myself out. Um, I am concerned about it just rusting in the Queensland humidity. 
I do miss being down in the dry. I'm very much missing Wimmera Mallee, the big wide open spaces and the peace and quiet and the fact that my truck won't rust. Uh, so yeah, I was looking at getting something a little bit more functional, something that I could put a baby seat in so I can do the grandma thing because obviously, you know, the truck's only got one bench seat. Can't put a car seat in there for the baby. I can't, you know, it's just not a functional car for, for the life I'm living at the moment, uh, it's, you know. So what I was looking at getting was getting a secondhand Toyota Land Cruiser Prado because that can function as a family car for if we want to do trips, you know, to the beach or something with the baby and my daughter, but it would still tow my caravan and it would be kind of nice to have a car that actually turns on straight away when you turn the key, whereas mine it's like, blah, 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 blah. It takes a good 10 minutes to start my truck and then warm it up and get it going and you know you've got to keep checking the fluids all the time like it's a lot of maintenance involved with an old car and I just I'm a little bit over it I love my truck but I just want something like but then the biggest fear of mine is that I would spend money you know getting a second-hand Toyota Land Cruiser Prado and then find that I'd inherited a car with a whole bunch of down prop down the road problems you know so yeah, I get quite a lot of PTSD and fear after what happened with the truck um, going down to Victoria last time. I'm, I just don't don't have the financial uh, safety net to deal with things going wrong in a big way when it comes to mechanical issues. And that's the biggest fear is that that can really disrupt my whole life when something like that happens and not being in a position to, to do anything about it. So. Um, but, you know, as my mechanic down at Warwick Nabil said, he goes, well, at least that can happen even with a newer car. So newer cars still break down too, and it's still, I don't know, at this stage the truck is the devil I know. At least I know what's been done with it, which is pretty much everything. Um, there's really not much else that could possibly go wrong with it at this point, because I've replaced whatever, reconditioned, refurbished, rebuilt everything all the gaskets and hoses and everything and every part of it the only thing I haven't done is like an actual engine rebuild which is probably something down the track it will need doing um, but at least I know you know I know exactly that. anyway I don't know tell me what you think you know should I change to a boring old Toyota Land Cruiser like every other caravan are out there on the road or should I stick with the truck and people say, oh, the Land Cruisers, they're really uh, gas guzzlers. They, you know, they, they've not got good fuel economy. And I looked it up and I'm like, you think that's not good fuel economy? Like 13 to 15 litres per 100 kilometres compared to my 25 litres per 100 kilometres on the truck? That would be good, actually. So, yeah, there's certain advantages with, with that as well. But, I don't know, creature comforts. Do you succumb? Do you soldier on? Anyway. I'll stop yabbering. I know I yabber too much. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm not in a particularly great space at the moment. I know I was super happy last time. Um, yeah, things happened. It didn't work out quite the way I thought it was gonna work out. So, anyway, love you guys. And thanks for those of you who have actually contacted me to say, is everything okay? And are you doing okay? I especially appreciate that. Uh, especially you, Tammy. You're really the only person that just literally calls me and messages me and asks, how are you doing? Are you okay? And that means the world to me because I haven't been necessarily doing great and I haven't been always okay. And and it really, yeah, it means a lot. I, I, don't, I don't post a lot of things when I'm not doing okay. And I think we've come to depend on what each other posts on social media more than we actually connect for real, like whether it's a phone call or a knock on the door, an actual contact and a real hug. I had some visitors stay with me from New Zealand. That was amazing. Van life visitors. Pretty cool. Van lifers in the kitchen. Say hi. Hi. That's Nick and Jackie, my visitors. Recognize the dress? We got one each. We're twinsies. We got the same dress. That's the dress that I was wearing busking the other day. And it was Jackie that actually filmed me 
wearing the pretty dress. <laughs> and it was our next door neighbour that gave us the pretty dresses, so bonus, bonus. And also awesomeness is that Nick helped me. We cut down all the bamboo that was along that fence that used to screech, screech, screech in the night. And there's more up the back that I'm going to tackle at some stage, but not for now. I felt so nice with that and just real, I want real human connection at the moment. I just want real human connection with people who I don't have to prove my worth to. But I'm okay. I know who I am and I appreciate you all. So beautiful here. Look at this. Look at these amazing hanging plants with flowers on them. So pretty. and me. We're waiting for the ferry. Hey, we're going to go on a boat. Um, we're just taking our time today because I don't like rushing. So, and just enjoying the beautiful parts of South Bank and it's not too hot today so that's nice. And we're right across from the city and it is a beautiful spot. I mean, I lived here in Brisbane when this was first built and all these trees were first planted and it's quite amazing to see it like all these years later and how much it's still grown and how beautiful it all looks. It's a real, it's a real asset to Brisbane. You know, gorgeous, you so sweet. She's being so good today. <laughs> so she can feel the wind. It's very noisy. You're doing good. Very good. This is Kangaroo Point Clips where I go rock climbing. Along there. that they've built from the botanical gardens across to Kangaroo Point. I don't think it's actually open yet, but look at it, they're still working on it. Very cool. Woohoo! Under we go. Rolling on. This is an important message about safety. Exits and life rings are located at the front and rear of the vessel. Life jackets are stored at the rear of the cabin. In the unlikely event of an emergency, follow our cruise directions. Enjoy your trip. Good girl, Pixie. So good. Those apartments over there, the cream ones, that's where I used to live. And the story bridge. Very cool. That's my old house. Cheers. Oh, oh my, thank you. All right, cheers, ladies. Oh my god. Cheers. Oh, she's sipping it before cheers in it. How is it? Oh, nice. It's good. There you go. Like, look at this, look at this, look at this gorgeous pool. Yeah! <laughs> oh, very cool. Have you met Nick before? I'm about to. Ah, he's a hardcore climber, so you guys will be on the same page. Jack's a hardcore
You're doing really well. So there's two options. You can go left, you can go right. I'd go right and you'll be fine. It is slopey, but you want to go high right with your leg. Yeah, and you're just going to be holding on to what you're holding on to. Yeah, it's nothing great, but you'll be fine. And as soon as you get up, then left leg where your elbow is. Yeah, that's it. And then left leg straight onto the ledge on the left. Yep, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's all very slopey. Yeah, awesome job. Cool. And then right leg up where your knee is. And then on your right hand side, there'll be a little hold on your right. Other right. I like that. Yeah, you can go that way if you want. I would recommend going right onto the ledge and then holding to the right. Yeah, there's a nice side pocket there. Yeah. And then, so what you can do is far left there's a good handhold a little bit higher yeah that thing there and then on the oh yeah yep and then in front of your face there's something that's really good there yeah just a pinch and then put your hand inside that cracky thing yeah in there yeah that's really good once you get up in there chalky bit there's a nice hold back there to the right yeah, see where the chalk is in front of your face, behind the rock. Hold on to that. That's really good. The chalk in front of your yeah, that's it in there. That's it. Cool. Use two hands there. Rest a little. Cool. This is probably the point where you want to unclip once you get your left leg up into that where your hand was. Yep. And then unclip. Yep. And then you want to aim for where the rope touches the rock, that ledge. So stand up from there and then high hand like that. Yep, left hand up. Yep. We're now one odd number, but that's okay. Jeff's almost finished. That's it, and now you want to step up again with your right leg and then aim for the next one. Yep, that's it. Put, yep, try and match. Yeah, that's it. Use that little crevice. Yep, that's it. And go across to the left. Yep, that's it. And then once you're up the top there, there's a really great crack straight in front of your face, kind of like what you just had. Lisa, so if you have a look at me, Straight in front of you, there's a thing like this, like a block. So once you get over, you can grab it. And it'll feel amazing. That's it. Yep, and grab that block. Yep, straight in front of you. You'll feel it, it's amazing. Clip your hand in. In. Ah, nice. Woohoo, legendary. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool place to go rock climbing.
It's been awesome. Brisbane, you're pretty cool. Going off over at River Stage, that's River Stage. I'm going to be going there soon to see Ministry of Sound again. Super excited about that. And that beautiful pink lit up thing, that's the Story Bridge. That's where I used to live, right over there. And I've been rock climbing tonight and I loved it. <laughs> 